What's up, everybody? So I am back. If you're not on Facebook or Instagram, you didn't see my post. Uh, I think it was like two Sundays ago. I got uh, pretty much rushed to the ER. I uh, had some stuff going on. I posted the full story on Facebook and Instagram. It's uh, it's a long story. Uh, long and the short, they're, uh, the doctors and the nurses and all that, they were really scared that uh, my heart rate jumped up incredibly. And they were scared that it was going to become irregular, and then that would lead to cardiac arrest. So uh, it wasn't, uh, wasn't anything small, but I'm not going to bore you guys. We got this one up. And the last time I did a video like this, the feedback I got was amazing. It went pretty much from start to finish on a tune and what we go, what, what happens and what we do. So I'm going to do the same thing on this one. This one's a four-door EG. I like those rims. It is non-VTEC, B20, and uh, we're going to go over this thing. I'm going to get it racked up, and I'll be right back, and I'm going to show you some, uh, some maybe do's, don'ts, some tips, some pointers, and what we're going to let the customer know what should be addressed. Hopefully you guys enjoy. So if you didn't catch my first dyno video I did like this from start to finish, and I'll uh, put a link below. Basically, right now the car's up in the air, and I'm doing a full once-over. Uh, this full once-over more so is just a quick safety check to make sure everything is going to be good, make sure we don't have any bolts that are just completely missing, um, stuff like that. Uh, I'm in the back just because I don't know if this guy's going to drive it home, trailer it home, but if I catch anything that might pose an issue on the way home, I'm gonna let him know so he knows. Uh, so basically a quick, simple bolt check. Now why I'm also down here, what I'm looking for is anything that's gonna hinder performance. And right away, we see that it's on, it's not on a stock muffler, it's aftermarket of course, but the diameter is very tiny. So this is, uh, and it's crush bent, so this is gonna hurt performance. And just to give you an idea, I can get my whole Pretty much my finger around it so that's actually probably right here where it's crushed down that's probably an inch and a half so that is not going to help anything when you're going for performance uh then we also see that there is this is all this is all like oil looks like oil that was burnt on uh, we get a little bit closer up here and uh we can see it's definitely leaking some kind of fluids kind of hard to pinpoint at this because it's all over the trans um I'm trying to look at the zip tie where I've seen the zip tie. What we're looking for is the ball joints, tie rods. He's got some cotter pins in there, so that's always a plus. Uh, making sure the bolts look tight. Anything that could pose an issue. We don't want a wheel flying off on the dyno, stuff like that. Brake lines aren't secure. I'm trying to do everything with one hand, but you can see the. Let me get my hand over here. You can see the brake line. Brake line's not secure. That's that's a big deal. You know, I mean, it's not. I don't think it's rubbing on anything. Nah, it's not rubbing on anything, but still, you want to secure that stuff. Um, got some more oil leaks. Looking at the return line, the turbo return line. It looks like we got some leaks up there. Uh, Dow pipe is tiny too. That is very tiny. Uh, he's not shooting for high numbers. He wants very conservative numbers. So, um, I think he said about 270-ish, 290-ish. So we're gonna see what we can hit on that. Um, but like I said, this is basically a once over that I do. We don't charge anything like this. My big thing is safety and making sure the tune is good and you know, being able to tell the customer, well, you could have made more power if, could make more power on less boost if, you know, if your exhaust was bigger. So stuff like that. This is what I'm trying to do, trying to help people out, trying to help the customer out. You see he's got some, got the dipstick clamp down that one's haven't seen that one we got some more oil leaks up there looks like they're coming from either the head gasket could be the valve cover dripping down could be the exhaust chambers too so that's going to be a big thing that i'm going to want to look into if he's getting oil inside the actual um cylinder head uh area in the spark plug area the combustion chamber that's that's the word i was looking for uh that's going to definitely be a, a big deal so something to look into and i'm going to uh put the phone away lower it down, get it strapped up, and get this one going. 
Okay, so we're in the bay, and uh, a couple things right away that stick out. Uh, there's no dump tube. So, right now, with the hood open, it's going to be, when it opens up, it's going to be shooting hot exhaust gas over here. Over here. Um, but when the hood is closed, you're going to be shooting hot exhaust gas inside the engine bay, which, you know, it's not good. It's going to spike your intake air temps. Because um, the turbo inlet's right there, too. Uh, it looks like it's got a cheaper filter. I'm actually going to take this off for the dyno. Sometimes these cheaper filters have a chrome piece on the inside, and they've been no and they're glued on, so they've been known to come off and suck into the turbo. So we don't want that to happen. Looking over everything right now, um, the one thing I see he has. I don't know if you pronounce him E M U S A or Emusa. I've heard him call. Uh, they're basically, I can't say an eBay part because eBay doesn't make parts. Someone corrected me on that. But those are cheaper injectors. So we'll see if he has all the specs for me on the dyno sheet just to make my life a little bit easier. See, so he's got some T's over here. Rule of thumb is something like the fuel regulator should always uh, be going to a source, vacuum source on its own. You don't want to keep teeing in everything. You want everything to get an accurate reading. Uh, he's got a precision wastegate, which is a plus. Uh, it looks like a knockoff blow-off valve. So hopefully that doesn't leak. If you watched the last video, you've seen that one. Looks like the uh, couplers and clamps are probably EM USA 2. Um, so it looks like they're that brand. Hopefully we get no pop-offs. Hopefully we get no leaks. We can reach his goal. He's got a K-Tune map sensor. Um... Spark plug wires, uh, they don't look, they say suppressor on them. This one looks a little bit like it's kind of falling off. So you always want to have good quality parts on your car, especially, I mean everything. But when it comes down to ignition, that's a plus. So we'll pull out the spark plugs here shortly. We can see the oil leak up here that we saw down below. Looks like it's dripping down the block a little bit. Could be the O-ring. Uh, it's hard to say on that one. But, uh, yeah. And if you, it, so if you missed my first video, my first video showed how I hooked the dyno up, how the dyno reads. I'm not going to do that in every video. It's going to get, uh, repetitive. So I'll link the first video below in case you missed it. If you're watching and you don't know and you just stumble upon the channel. And I'm going to get inside. I'm going to set up the tune and I will be back. So I'm sitting in the car getting ready to uh, start, the, start the tune, and we have a dyno checklist here. We give this out to everybody. You don't even have to be a customer here. If you're on the whole other side of the world and you're getting a tune, well, this will help you out. And it's going to help. The, the more you do on this and follow this, it's going to help the tuner out more. So even if you're not coming here, we are all about helping people. So we go into the next little segment, and I have his, uh, I have his personal info blocked off. Um, we have a dyno waiver that you have to fill out and sign. And on the second page, there's some basic questions. And the basic questions are going to ultimately help me while I'm tuning the car. Is your car ready for the dyno? Yes. Um, you know, we, we want to make sure that we didn't miss over anything. If you think it's not ready, well, tell us why. You know, hey, maybe I want the boost, maybe I want a boost leak test done. It's, it's not ready. Do that. Well, uh, he didn't do a boost leak test. As you can see, that's our second question. Uh, but that, that question just more so is there to, you know, ensure that we're good to go. Now, the you, you see the wastegate spring size, octane rating, spark plugs. Um, that is all left blank. Now, this is the, this stuff is going to help the tune. To help the tune go smooth, the, the perfect the tune. Uh, without knowing the wastegate spring size and without knowing the injector size, you know, let's just say the injector size is, you know, let's say they're 240 or, or 310, we'll say. If they're 310 and your wastegate spring size is a 15 pound spring, I'm not going to be able to finalize the tune. I'm not even going to be able to get into boost because your injectors are going to be maxed out instantly. Spark plugs, not a huge deal on this car, of course, because I can take them out and I can look at them really quick. Some cars, it's not easy to take the plugs out. So that is why the spark plugs are on there. And octane rating. Now, you think octane rating would be common sense and, you know, well, put premium in it or E85. Um, I, ha I have had cars that would come back for retunes because they had to fix something 
I had one car specifically. Everything was fine. It came back. It, it came back. And sorry, I had to flip the camera around. I had, a, had an itch on my chin. It came back and it had, it had, it was just knocking for no reason. Like nothing was changing the tune and the prior time it was here, you know, it was fine. And I'm trying to get the glare off, but it's, it's sunny behind me. So everything was fine. Okay. A little bit better. So I call the customer and I'm like, Hey, it was an SI, um, a newer SI. And I, I said, did you do anything different? Did you, did you change something? Did you change the spark plug? What did you do? And uh, I asked him what, what gas he put in, and he informed me he put 87 octane in. And, you know, I said, why? You know, it, 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 I'm tuning it, and it was tuned before on premium gas. And he said, well, he was low on money that week, and he needed to get by. Stuff like that I need to know before a tune. That's, that's simple. So, so now with all that in, without that information... Um, I'm going to get into the tune. I'm going to get it as smooth as I possibly can without knowing the injector, not, not only knowing the injector size, but not in having the injector card. And the injector card is a big deal. I explained that in the first video. So click the link below if you haven't watched it. Without knowing that stuff, I'm not going to be able to perfect the tune. I just can't. Um, you know, that's, and, and I try to base everything off of like, you know, real world experience or someone, you know, if you don't tune for a living, maybe it's, it's hard for people to understand, you know, or you don't know anything about tuning, you know? So if I hire a painter to paint my house and say, Hey, paint the outside uh, a color I like. And then I come back and it's like, I don't like this color. This ain't perfect. This is not what I want. Well, you know, I, th this stuff helps me. This stuff helps perfect the tune. I, uh, now I have to basically just kind of guess and maybe look online really quick. Maybe I'll get lucky, but you know, I'm not going to spend 45 minutes in an hour looking for that stuff. And if you know, the company Emusa doesn't have them or EMUSA doesn't include that stuff, that should be a, that should be a high alert in your mind to get better. We're talking about injectors now to get better injectors. If you buy a wastegate and they can't tell you what color springs are what, that's like a red flag get a better brand wastegate. Can't skip out. It's the old rule, the old saying, do it right the first time and you don't have to redo it. Do it wrong the first time, you're going to redo it like two or three other times. Save money the first time. And I don't want to forget and exactly what I was talking about before. This is the filter I took off and you can see that little chrome piece in there. Um, some companies will use glue and it's been known that those will come off and get sucked in the turbo and ruin your turbo. So we're going to leave this off for now and we'll let him know. So I just hopped outside of the car, uh, got the tune pretty much dialed in. The uh, customer actually knew the octane rating, the wastegate spring size, and the injector size. I uh, sent them an email. It wasn't filled out on the dyno sheet, whatever, no big deal. Um, they don't have the injector info, though. I looked online, couldn't find it. So I'm going to pretty much do my best at what I can get at that. So as I'm tuning, um, and as you're doing this routine, and in any kind of work environment, you become, uh, you become aware of your surroundings. You become aware of noises. And um, as I'm dialing it in, I, I hear like an abnormal noise, um, not something that I would normally hear. So I stop the car, I hop out, and something's missing on the wastegates. And I see the bolt down there. See, it's uh, there's the bolt. I gotta find the other piece now. Uh, you can see it dripping a good amount of oil too down there. So, you know, all that stuff has to be cleaned before, uh, after now the next dyno session. So, uh, you know, it's getting to a point, depending on how bad it is, uh, I'm gonna have to start cleaning, charging a cleanup fee. I hate to do stuff like that, but I mean, you know, this block is there's a good amount of oil trailing down on it. And uh, just judging by it, you know, it doesn't look like the valve cover is actually leaking. It looks actually like a new gasket. You can see around dead center of the camera. I'm not going to get close, but the manifold port is a little oily over here as well. You can see that darkness. So you might have something going on uh, inside internally. So. I'll be back. I got to find that other piece of the uh, wastegate, though. So, as I'm uh, 
on a creeper right now, and I figure now's a good time to show you the air brakes. So you can actually see how the dyno works under here, um, hooked up to an airline, and it's uh, kind of like semi-brakes, I think. There's the big brake pad. There's two on each side that stops the dyno. Um, of course, when you hit the air, it goes up and down this, uh, this, little, this little rod. Um, but I'm on a creeper because I gotta get the piece of the wastegate which is right here. Uh, we'll actually, we'll put that back inside his car and uh, we will continue. So, actually let me yell to somebody really quick and you'll see how this works. Okay, so I just yelled for my handy dandy helper to come and he's gonna hit the red button. I yeah, go ahead. Okay, hit it again. There you go. See, uh, so while I'm laying under here, I figure I'd show you guys how the dyno brake works. Okay, so we're back inside here. And I uh, hopped out real quick. We're having some weird issue where at about 4,000-ish RPMs, give or take, the, we're getting like almost like a cut. Uh, car starts building boost. Things are looking good. And then it just cuts out, and everything looks good. Uh, you know, boost, boost cut is fine. It's not hitting boost cut where I have it set. Uh, launch control is disabled. Um, I disable launch control on the dyno just in case the computer, if the computer cannot see how fast the car is moving, it actually thinks it's sitting at a standstill and it will enable launch control as you're driving. His mile per hour gauge actually does not work either. So as I'm getting into it a little bit, um, build and boost just fine. I, I hear a random noise. Uh, it doesn't get worse. Kind of just goes away. I'm thinking, you know, whatever, maybe something in the engine bay hit, knocked, whatever. Get into it again, and the car doesn't want to build any boost now. Uh, no boost at all. And I left the fitting off the top of the wastegate because you don't need that fitting. Uh, if you're doing boost by gear, that's, that's what boost by gear is for. Electronic boost controller goes on there. So I left it off, and uh, I'm checking all the pipes. Qu quickest, easiest way to check for a boost leak because it's, it doesn't want to build boost now. You know, just grab a pipe and, and visual, visual, just look. You know, do you have any blow-offs? Don't see any blow-offs. Going over here, don't see anything blowing off. Bumper thing's a little loose, no big deal. You know, visual over here. So everything looks good. So uh, I go over here to the turbo and the amount of shaft play. I'm gonna have to go grab a light or turn the light on here. Hold on. Let me stop this and turn the light on because I can't do it while I'm recording. Uh, the amount of shaft play this thing has, and you can see the oil. And bear with me here, the phone might go upside down. It is fairly hot still, the turbo, so I don't want to burn myself. Ah, that is, that is hot. You can see the turbo now is pretty much done for um no brand no name brand turbo i don't know if this is like a holy musa kit but this is what you get with these no name brand turbos they're so hit or miss and this one has seen its life it is uh it is a miss with this one so pretty much done with this i don't want to have that turbo spool up any more than i have to now i don't want this to destroy itself I don't want any of those pieces to go inside the intercooler and maybe make it sway inside the throttle body. So at this point, uh, I'm gonna have to tell the customer that his turbo pretty much is done and uh, that is gonna conclude the tune as well. So this one's a shorter tune. Uh, wish it had a better ending, but this one's pretty much out of my hands at this point.